United States Air Force provides the finest trained and equipped airmen in the world as integral elements of America's joint force, exploiting the unique characteristics of air, space, and cyberspace to deliver dominance across a vast range of operational environments. Long adept at harnessing advanced technologies in transformational ways, the Air Force continues to deliver unequaled capabilities to joint force commanders. Fifth generation technologies in air superiority, ISR, special operations, and now in cyberspace, posture the United States Air Force to keep abreast of a changing world and an uncertain future. Our challenge as we field the most technologically advanced weapon systems possible is to ensure that we continue to prepare our airmen to wield these tools at the levels of proficiency demanded by the extraordinarily diverse and fluid operational environments we expect to encounter. By establishing what is called a Live Virtual Constructive Environment, or LVC, the Air Force is transforming its training, testing, and experimentation so that our airmen will be prepared to meet this complex challenge. One indispensable requirement is to train to the full capabilities of our fifth generation weapon systems and weapons and do it safely and within the geographic, environmental, and legal constraints of our ranges. When you consider the capabilities of the new weapon systems that we have, like JDAMs, where you virtually can't drop those anywhere on the European continent, uh, it's, it's going to become more and more critical to tie in that LVC. Fifth generation uh, will dramatically change the way we've trained in the past. Uh, primarily because range requirements are bigger, uh, training assets to make sure we properly train the full range of capabilities in a fifth generation capability. You look at super cruise, you look at LO capability, and you look at the avionics and what that brings to the fight. The normal similar versus similar training that we have adopted in a lot of our units is negative training. But with precision weapons and the footprints of precision weapons. Now as you look at supersonically delivered JDAMs that have a huge footprint, there is no range in the globe that's going to allow us to safely do that. So now we have a challenge. How do you train like you fight when you can't employ the weapons that you're going to fight with in the day-to-day -day or even the large-scale training exercises that you have? What we're beginning to discover here is that new weapons, new systems are going to demand a new type of training, what we would call fifth generation training. Additionally, the availability of resources greatly constrains our ability to conduct training, testing, and experimentation to the level of fidelity and completeness that today's complex missions demand. How will the Air Force train to the limits of fifth generation weapon system capabilities, overcome real world resource constraints, and create realistic and complex threat environments so that we can truly train the way we intend to fight? Through the live, virtual, constructive environment. The live, virtual, constructive environment is a framework of protocols, standards, and architectures that permit hardware, software, and network components to interoperate. A collection of constructive models and authoritative data supports this framework, providing users a common toolkit for air operations, information operations, ISR, and component integration. It allows us to network together in real time, live weapon systems with virtual mission simulators and constructive computer models. In this way, we can overcome real world constraints by using simulated and constructive components where they are appropriate, integrated with live assets in such a way as to optimize the total environment. It is a synthetic battle space where mission simulators, live aircraft, command and control nodes, any number of participants, all connect together to share a complex and challenging experience. And so what we have done is we have taken legacy simulators and got them to talk to each other. And we are able to build a force of guys in simulators, live people in technology, flying together, rehearsing a mission, potentially flying out a campaign plan against a threat that we can dial up or down, against weather we can dial up or down, an electromagnetic or electronic attack scenario where we can fly using our jammers, we can jam the GPS, we can do all the things we need to do that we can't do in peacetime airspace. Certainly. 
uh, in, in today's uh, environment. It, it's either impossible or way too cumbersome to bring everybody into the same playset, so to speak. And that's a great advantage that LVC brings is that it puts everybody in the same sandbox. Uh, and they can do that, in a lot of cases, right from their home station. And then uh, bring in guys from around the world with the different capabilities that we physically don't have the assets for. Amalgam Aero is a recurring NORAD homeland air defense exercise that has used the live virtual constructive environment to integrate joint, coalition, and federal agencies to test readiness to respond to air threats in North America. A recent amalgam arrow was successfully combined for the first time with a virtual flag exercise and integrated such disparate capabilities such as Army Avenger and Stinger air defense artillery simulators, the Norwegian Advanced Surface to Air Missile System, Coast Guard helicopter simulators, Air Force E-3 AWACS, and F-15 Eagle and F-16 Falcon simulators, and Army NORAD, and Transportation Security Administration command and control facilities. It also helps build coalition capability, which I think in the 21st century is absolutely critical because of the size our Air Force is going to. We can't sustain a large operation. We just don't have enough beaches for a long time without coalition play. You know, we got to work right now on constructing that capability to generate more mass uh, for and more persistence uh, and more tempo then maybe our own Air Force could sustain our own Air Force and our own Navy if they have access to, to the battle space. Well, just think if we could overcome some of the multi-level security issues. Just think you could have a four-ship of uh, Australian Hornets on And they could be back in Brisbane or wherever they are, and they could be flying with a, a four-ship out of Hill. And they could be going and doing an integrated uh, uh, mission set against a pretty gnarly threat and that builds confidence so that when they when the, when history arrives unannounced and they find themselves showing up at a fight together they know each other I mean they've never shook hands personally but they flow with each other like all innovative approaches the live virtual constructive environment is not without its challenges Putting together a complex exercise can require many weeks to integrate all of the various ranges, systems, and models. Since many of our capabilities have evolved independently over time, interfaces and common standards that would either permit rapid integration either don't exist or due to fiscal or other fact-of-life constraints haven't been rigidly enforced. The data used for constructive models and range and legacy system integration are constantly changing further complicating the integration effort. And the more joint and interagency partners are added, the more data requirements change. So while the live virtual constructive environment shows tremendous promise, the lack of persistence, interoperability, and availability have hampered the realization of its full potential. So we have a lot of activity because I think a lot of people realize just from being around their kids and being around home, and then seeing what is being done in the commercial world around them that uh, in a little taste of even in the military what they've experienced in these new simulators uh, that uh, uh, that they're all heading off towards the right horizon the question is to get them on convergent headings uh, so they can draft off each other you know like a flock of geese and get there quicker I mean I would rather say we need to construct an approach that generates the effect I've been talking about. Um, in our parlance, certainly an advocate, a flag level advocate who gets listened to by the corporate process is an important feature. I think if we could get unity of effort and unity of focus and unity of oversight and advocacy, then I think uh, even with the legacy monies that may be going out, we could probably spend them a little bit better on the higher return areas of LVC. So if we do this right as a corporate air force, I think we can probably get to 21st century warfare and do it quicker, better, and maybe even cheaper overall. Our incoming generation of airmen has grown up on high tech, special effects at the movies, and extraordinarily sophisticated gaming systems. This is the way they communicate, interact, and learn. And in order to fully capture the capabilities of this new generation, we must 
equip them with the kind of tools they've grown accustomed to. More importantly, they expect it. If we're able to partner with industry now, we have gaming industry, we have computer industry, we have uh, you know these movies and special effects industries. We have all sorts of, of uh, ways we can take databases and make them very, very high fidelity, very responsive, very realistic in terms of how they replicate reality and how you can program in all sorts of uh, evolving variables. Uh, to really keep us on our feet and something that more closely replicates the fight you get into than flying in airspace live. But the real question is, is when the JSF is fielded and it's 2018 and we look back on the red flag that we're flying then and the mission employment exercises and the training we're doing with our fifth generation assets, the question we should be able to answer is, do we take ourselves on the right path to train for the future? LVC is growing to meet this challenge today and as it matures, becomes more available, more interoperable, and more authoritative, airmen from across the force will find ever-expanding and innovative ways to use it. We need only build it, and they will come. The promise of the live, virtual, constructive environment is being fulfilled. It's on an upward vector to become an indispensable means to develop our airmen and our air, space, and cyberspace weapon systems of tomorrow.